friends today we are going to talk on or discuss on concept of ecology and ecosystem uh, with focus on ecosystem structure this session is a uh, for the program post graduate diploma in sustainable science and it's part of msd 012 ecosystem in natural resources it's in ecosystem natural resources the major focus of this course is on the concept of ecosystem and natural resources and present i mean status in terms of quality and quantity so in the first session today we are going to look on the basic concept of ecology and ecosystem with a major focus on ecosystem structure. You know, this term ecology uh, is derived from two Greek words. Oikos means house or place of living or living flesh. And under uh, this word logos it means study. If you simply look into the meaning of this Greek word, it means that study of house or a living flesh. The term was first coined by academic Hans Hickel in 1869. So if you look into the simple meaning, what I mentioned, it is study of the interrelationship of organism with their natural environment. Because when we study a living place or a house, if you look into a house or living place, you will find out different members. So here, the members is the organisms and the structure is natural environment. So, so in other words, it is relationship between, if you look into the, from that, uh, what do we visualize in a place of living or in a house? We can have, or you, we have two major components, the biotic and the biotic component. So, it is re study of the relationship between the biotic and abiotic component. At the same time, you will see this biotic component also interact with each other. And so, it is also the study of relationship between biotic and abiotic component, biotic and biotic component of the ecosystem. E. P. Udham, the famous ecologist, he defined this ecology a study of the structure and function of nature, which includes the living world. And to study the structure and the function or the relationship between different components or among different components means biotic, abiotic, or biotic, biotic relationship, there must, a, must be a fundamental unit. So, Adam refer ecosystem is the basic fundamental unit of ecology. And practically, this ecology involves as we are trying to study or study the relationship between those components, it's involved collection of information about those components, especially living organism and their environment, and looks into the pattern of distribution of those component and the abundance and adaptation to the changes in environment and try to explain how the pattern exists in that particular place of study. So when ecosystem is the basic unit of ecology, what is the ecosystem? Technically, the ecosystem refers to a whole community of organism 
and its environment is one unit. And this term was first coined in the year 1930 by Roy Clefan to mean the combined physical and biological components of an environment. But later on in 1935, British colleges utterly refined this term, what we understand today, which we are explaining how in the later stage of the session. So in simple words, when it, uh, it is a unit, a piece, a piece of land or place of living place, it can be defined as a piece of land or water body where the life continues without the need of human support or intervention means to live in that particular piece of flesh in, 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 in its own natural way. So if you look, we will find forest a distinct characteristic that's coast stem which is dominated by trees, grassland dominated by grass, pond, water body, in aquatic body we will see small water, I mean, uh, water body, pond, lake, coral reefs, they provide and uh, they are the examples of natural ecosystem. And in case of human made ecosystem, as we see the cropping agriculture, the cropping system, the farming system, the croplands, they are also an ecosystem. So when we try to understand this basic unit of studied ecology, we have visualized different level of that components or member in that particular unit. So the simplest level of organization in any of the ecosystem it may be in aquatic ecosystem, it may be in forest ecosystem. It is that is an organism. Like if you look in the forest, plant, any plant, animal, or microorganism that inhabits in that ecosystem. The another organization you will see is the population that includes all the members of the same organism that plays. I mean, that live in a particular place at a one time. And those population in a place at one time, you will find those population in different groups, with different phenotypical characteristics, like uh, grass trees, uh, and uh, in plant also, trees, half stuff. So all the different population that live in a particular area that make a community. And here you will find, we find that there is a physical location where the community live. That is called, that physical location of a community is called a habitat. Then if you look, the ecosystem, the level, if you look in a global context and where the organism live, if you look into her level, then this ecosystem is in turn is a level of organization and that organization higher and higher scale is called biosphere, the living sphere. So in another word, we can say that an ecosystem is the basic functional unit of the biosphere. And if you look, look basically look into some of the existing ecosystem like terrestrial, aquatic, and so the major terrestrial ecosystem of the world that extend continuously means with uh, their group of climax biotic community in large biosphere area are called bombs. Some of the example of terrestrial bombs are tundra, taiga, deciduous forest, tropical rainforest, chaparral, savanna, grassland desert. So this extension of biomes and that is determined uh, by climatic graphic factors and uh, its location means from point of geographical location and the other factor like geomorphic factors. 
So it is what this is like a basic concepts which we need to understand when we are trying to study ecosystem or we are trying to learn about the ecology. So at last, we can define ecosystem as a structural and functional unit of the biosphere. If you look into the broader scale in a, or a segment of natural system, if you look into lower level that consists of community of living banks and their, uh, and their physical environment. Those community of living banks and physical environments, they are interacting and exchanging, exchanging materials between them with consistent flow of energy across the system. So what are the, how the ecosystem is structured? Structurally, the ecosystem, it consists of a community of living organisms along with their abiotic environment. So it can be, the structural ecosystem can be described in terms of some of the basic structure like components, trophic organization, species composition, stratification, size and scale, boundaries, etc. So let us have a look into details on those basic structure of the ecosystem. As you know, the force is the component. So when we said that the ecology study of the interaction between uh, that uh, biotic and biotic environment, definitely this has two major components. One is biotic component, another is a biotic component. Biotic components include all living beings. Living beings like humans, animals, plants, and other microorganisms. A biotic include all physical chemical entities like air, water, soil, rocks, minerals, etc. All this basic concept we have learned since our school days. But here we have to look from a, from a different perspective. On the other hand, at the same time, we need to revisit those concepts today to I mean, understand the issues of sustainability when you become, when you are a student of sustainability science. Then again, if you further look, the biotic community means uh, component of ecosystem, the first component that is uh, uh, a biotic component, that can be distinguished into autotroph, heterotroph, phagotroph, and sepotrophs. Autotrophs, which is also called as producer, converters, or transducers. And this autotroph is the, uh, the, from the uh, two Greek words, auto means self, tropos means feeder. On the other hand, heterotrophs, we also call as consumer, which are generally animals feeding on other organisms, that feeds on other organisms. Phagotrophs are those, or we call as macro consumer, the injuries or swallow, the food. So phagotrophs are mainly the herbivores that we call as a first order consumer or primary consumers. Yes, they fit directly on the plants as you know. Carnivores, second order consumer that fits on the herbivores. Secondary carnivores that fits on the carnivore. Then tertiary carnivore that's that uh, uh, tech, uh, secondary carnivores. So example of uh, the secondary carnivores are all fico, all etc. Tertiary carnivores, cottony consumers like animals that who is uh, that uh, fit on the uh, secondary carnivores include you know, lion, tiger. The larger carnivores, which is cannot be preyed upon further, are called the top carnivores. The another category, scientifically, if you look in technically. Uh, the another group about community is sepotroph. It's a word, sepotroph is that the Greek word. Sepros means rotten, trophos means feeder. They are also called as decomposer or reducers. Sepotrophs break down the complex organic compounds of the dead matter of plants and animals. These decomposers do not ingest their food. Instead, they secret digestive enzymes into the dead and decaying plant and animal remains to digest the organic material. 
and this enzyme act upon the complex organic compound of the dead matter. So this decomposer absorb a part of the decomposition products for their own nourishment while the remaining substances are added as a minerals to the substrate. That's called mineralization. And these released minerals are reused as nutrients by the plants that is produced. So this is the, uh, these are the uh, basic, uh, I mean, uh, body community uh, which is exist in the ecosystem component. So you will see here who are the uh, in a different ecosystem and uh, then uh, the primary producer, what are the uh, primary producer, primary consumer, secondary consumer, tertiary consumer, quaternary consumer in this table. Another ecosystem components is abiotic components that represent the physical chemical environment of the earth and include different physical entities like the air we breathe, water we drink, soil that gives support to the plant and that gives support to our uh, dwelling purpose, I mean, construction of houses, etc. As well as temperature, light, etc. This abiotic component are further classified under three categories climatic, geographic or geomorphic and edaphic components. Climatic component, as you know, like light, humidity, atmospheric, temperature, wind, etc. Geographic or geomorphic components are land topography, slope, aspect, then altitude, uh, latitude, etc. And endophic components uh, that related to the structure and composition of soil that include inorganic substances like water, carbon, sulfur, nitrogen, phosphorus, etc. as well as organic substances like protein, lipids, carbohydrates, uh, humic substances, etc. The second ecosystem structure is trophic organization. What is trophic organization? Trophic organization is the pattern of food relationship in ecosystem. It can be graphically represented by means of as we call technically call as ecological pyramids. These ecological pyramids, that graphical representation of ecological parameters, like can be, I mean, represent in the terms of numbers of individual, or when we say tropic organization is the food pattern of food relationship, then it can also be represented in terms of biomass and the amount of energy. You will see. The ecological parameter of number, they are a luge. They you will get parameter of number into two. I mean, one is uh, both, you will get uh, half in, uh, both upright and inverted shape. There you see, here in this diagram, in the figure, in the grassland, when you talk about number, who are the producer? Grasses. You know, number of grasses is high. Then, the second level in this structure, pyramid structure, is herbivores. That it's the producer grasses, insects. Insect is less number than grasses. So, in the same way, then the next carnivores, that the frogs and birds, that fit upon the insects, they have small number. So, in that, in that way, it will have a, then it will have such kind of pyramid as we call it upright pyramid, right? So in case of parasitic food chain, you know here, if you look at a number that is producer, that that body, it may be trees, it may be an, a dead body of uh, either trees or uh, animals. So here, the producer is only one, right? That, that body that is taken by another herbivores. Okay, that herbivores is large number, is large number that fit on that, that decomposing, decomposes that herbivores that are like birds, uh, they, it is, uh, that will be in large numbers, right? Then, if you look into this, you will see this is upright. The number in terms, 
Trees is the basic, the dead body trees in the, it is the basic and the parasitic food chain. Uh, I mean, uh, this is the, uh, that uh, basic, uh, I mean, uh, foundation as a producer here. So this is how in terms of number, you will have about upright and inverted pyramid. In case of uh, pyramid of biomass, you know, I will, in here also you will get both upright and uh, uh, that's uh, inverted pyramid. So inverted pyramid actually, uh, it will, uh, you will get an aquatic ecosystem here in this diagram, you will be able to uh, understand very easily the producers in this aquatic ecosystem are uh, algae, small uh, microorganism, which is, uh, I mean, eaten by uh, herbivores, uh, like, uh, I mean, uh, eaten by small fishes, then, and then carnivores. If you look into that biomass, then the biomass will be increasing. The producers, the biomass of that produces small. In the same way, if you look into the terrestrial ecosystem producer, you know, your plant biomass is larger than your herbivores, and it is, uh, uh, this herbivores is larger than primary carnivores, and uh, primary carnivores is larger than top carnivores. Then another is pyramid of energy, energy pyramid, that this will allow us upward, because energy flows in a direction way, and uh, we are going to discuss in details uh, later on. There is a rules uh, called is one person in a uh, one person norms. So here you will see that primary producer that is uh, that plant uh, they have maximum whatever the energy it receives that only ten percent of that energy is transferred to the primary consumer then of that 10%, only 10% means 1% of the first uh, uh, that uh, uh, producer that received the energy means 1% of that is transfer to the secondary consumer. So in that way, at the top carnivores, you will get 0.01% of the energy. That's why the energy pyramid is a Lewis upward. This trophic structure of an ecosystem, it can also be described in terms of amount of nutrient or the amount of living material. So the amount of nutrients in the soil at any given time is referred as standing stack, whereas the amount of living material is referred as standing crop. When we study this trophic structure, we need to understand, you know, the transfer of this energy, the transfer of that biomass is taken place when one I mean, level is eaten to another level. So this uh, relationship of energy transfer, nutrient transfer, and then uh, that uh, biomass transfer is through food system. So this food relationship in an ecosystem is called age. It can also, it is uh, called age food chain. So the pattern of, this pattern of eating and buying eaten from a liner chain is called food chain, which can always be traced back to the producer. No, you started from the producer. On the basis of the nature of that eaten and buying eaten, two types of food chains are recognized. One is grazing food chain that starts from the living green plants and goes to grazing herbivore and to the carnivores. Another is detritus food chains that start from the detritus or did organic matter and goes through a series of saprophytic or decomposure organism. This both type of food chain are essential age. I, I told you, uh, I mentioned you that the, for the flow of energy and uh, biomass nutrients, nutrient cycling in ecosystem. So in nature, various food chains are linked together and form a 
multi-channel pattern or complex network of food relationship and that is called food web. Here you will see in this diagram. This cricket is eaten by mouse and that it grasses this eaten by mouse and it is also eaten by frog. So here this frog and this mouse is eaten by hog and it's also eaten by snake, this mouse. So you will see this is, you know, we, uh, this diagram shows and uh, that food web, how the, uh, the structure of food web. So here also you will see the structure of food web, how the part of energy is what's going on. So you will be able to understand very clearly from this figure. The third structure of ecosystem is species composition and stratification. And what is species then? Species are the basic unit of classification consisting of a population or series of population of close related and similar individual that fully interbreed with one another in natural condition, but not with the members of the other species. That can that so can so different functional state in ecosystem, and the species can perform unique function, but many times different species. Uh, they also show uh, the same function. So a species composition means, when talk about a species composition, means the number of species present in that ecosystem. And this also, I mean, uh, call is the number of species or species composition is also called a species richness or species diversity. It means proportionate to the productivity and stability of ecosystem. And sometimes you will find out uh, another concept and that the key call as keystone species because they perform critically important role in the ecosystem. If you destroy uh, that particular ketone species, the entire ecosystem can collapse. One of the examples is the pollinator. If you destroy the pollinator, you know, it will be very difficult uh, to manage that ecosystem. The other the fourth uh, that the ecosystem structure uh, is stratification, means presence of layers, stratum in vertical structure of an ecosystem. And you will see uh, the structure of ecosystem like uh, in a uh, forest ecosystem we have see uh, that plants or trees uh, that constitute in different several high classes. Uh, in a simple way, we'll leave, you, will, you can find out one is grasses, half, shrubs, tree, in trees also different high classes. So plants belonging to same height class can be viewed as one stratum. So several such strata are found in an ecosystem. So this ecosystem, the ecosystem vary in terms of degree of stratification, which is, is often proportionate to the diversity, productivity, and stability of the ecosystem. So that's why stratification is one of the important and, and structure ecosystem. And the fifth one is size and scale. You know, size and scale of ecosystem can vary widely. You may, we may see that in very large ways, such as tropical rainforest, Amazon, Amazon forest, Sahara desert, or sometimes in a very small, such as test tube experiment of phytoplankton. That's also, we do the experiment in the ecosystem. And aquarium, aquarium tank, what you have seen with plants and the fish, that is also an ecosystem. Some even you can define, you know, then extensive of ecosystem as biome, although generally an ecosystem and views having more defined about the environment than a biome. And a biome is a group of ecosystem sharing broad environment and characteristic. That's why in the beginning we say biome, like grassland, chaparral, tundra, they are example of biome. The sixth important structure of ecosystem and boundaries. The boundary of an ecosystem is, you know, is not always easy to delineate it. You cannot easily identify, I mean, boundary. So different ecosystem, it is often separated by geographical barriers like deserts, mountain, ocean, or other isolated uh, like uh, the natural uh, that, um, characteristic like lakes or rivers. So as these boundaries are never rigid ecosystem tend to blend to each other. For example, uh, the boundary of river may seem very clear, but uh, the one, but some species like crocodile, 
they can stay in the um, and basically most of the time they can they will stay in the river but sometime they crawl from river to the uh, to the river bank barks in the sun like water uh, water birds are uh, they fly they feed from uh, they fit in the uh, water body uh, then uh, they will stay in their nest in the um, uh, these trees uh, this is some of the examples and tapirs speak like animals they may swim in the water but really yet they live on land so up to some extent the whole art you know can be seen as a single ecosystem or a leg can be divided into several ecosystems and so the concept of ecosystem uh, is depend on on the scale you are using, the level you are going to use, that is uh, the boundaries. So the point here, what we have studied uh, and discussed in this uh, discussion is that uh, eco ecology is a subset uh, that, uh, that study the interaction between biotic and abiotic environment. And the unit basic unit of unit of ecology is ecosystem. Ecosystem has different uh, structure uh, characteristic that uh, is defined by different characteristic as we sometimes call is a structure of ecosystem that can be removed from, uh, for example, uh, like boundary size, scale, stratification, spatial composition. And uh, in inside the ecosystem, there is flow of uh, uh, flow of um, this energy, uh, flow of biomass. So that's we have discussed today. This is the basic concept of uh, the some of the basic concept which we need to relook or remember uh, to understand for the study on different issues related to sustainability. And uh, this uh, presentation is based on this reference. Thank you.